Welcome to the Faculty of Science virtual celebration event for our final year students, the class of 2020. My name is Professor Jens Markloff and I am the Dean of the Faculty of Science. It is my pleasure to welcome you all today. Here we are together in this virtual space when of course we expected to be welcoming you to your graduation ceremonies in person this month. Instead, we are here together online to take this opportunity to instead celebrate the completion of your time with us. As you will have heard, this is not a virtual graduation event. You will all be invited back to celebrate your awards when we are able to safely hold these. But we do hope that today gives you a chance to reflect on your time living and studying at the university and in the city and to look to your future. Some 5,000 of our students, both undergraduate and postgraduate, are finishing their studies at Bristol this summer. Today we celebrate our students from the Faculty of Science who have completed their studies in our schools of chemistry, earth sciences, geographical sciences, mathematics and physics. Welcome to you all. I would also like to give a warm welcome to our guest speakers today. Professor Hugh Brady, Vice Chancellor and President of the University. Ruth Day, a final year mathematics and philosophy student and Bristol SU student living officer. Dame Julia Slingo, a British meteorologist and climate scientist and one of our science faculty alumna. She has a BSc in mathematics and physics and a PhD from the University of Bristol. She served as chief scientist for the UK Met Office from 2009 to 2016. Finally, we are joined by some of the faculty staff and many familiar faces. Why don't you give it a little wave? Wonderful. Um, before we get started today, a few housekeeping notes for you and what to expect for the next hour. You will see that for students and staff on the webinar, the chat function is open for you to use. Please do take the opportunity to thank staff and friends and to celebrate and reminisce but please do use this responsibly and remember that this is a celebration event for everyone. You will also see a Q&A button below where you can submit questions throughout the event for Dame Julia. Please use this button and not the chat for this. The event will be recorded to share with those that were unable to join us live. You will see have seen your pre-submitted messages for staff, supporters, and your peers before the event. These will also be shown again at the end of the event. You can continue to submit these throughout the event and the link will be posted in the chat. If you want to use any social media during the event, please, please use hashtag Bristol class of 2020. And thank you very much to our BSL interpreters, Catherine and Anna. I would now like to introduce the Vice Chancellor and President, Professor Hugh Brady, to give his address. Thank you, Jens, and good morning, everybody. Uh, warmest congratulations on reaching the end of your studies. Uh, this moment certainly deserves celebrating, uh, but as, as Jens has said, it's not intended to be uh, a substitute for your in-person graduation. But we look forward to seeing you in the Great Hall uh, in the near future, hopefully once the pandemic has re resolved and when it's safe to do so. We're all very aware of the huge effort that you've put in to your studies to date, the many hours in lecture theatres, libraries, seminar rooms, laboratories, and, and in many cases, I'm sure, field trips. You, you've earned your success, you deserve your success, and I know I speak for everybody across the university when I say we're very, very proud of you. I know this isn't the type of 
celebration that you had in mind when you first uh, enrolled in the university. This is a, a unique response to an extraordinary event, a once in a century event, the global uh, pandemic. And I'd just like to personally thank you for your understanding and flexibility, particularly over the last weeks and months, and, and to commend you on your tremendous resilience. This has been really, really difficult, I know, uh, but uh, the, the skills and the, uh, the adaptive skills that you've uh, acquired over the last weeks and month, I, months, I know will serve you well uh, over the, not just years, but decades ahead. Our entire community, uh, students and staff, has responded in a, in a truly extraordinary fashion to allow all of our students to progress and of course your class, the class of 2020, uh, to graduate. But of course there was so much more uh, while all of this transition to online was going on. Uh, many of your lecturers and professors uh, really stepped up their research to, you know, for example, understand the, the pathobiology of the virus, to develop new uh, vaccine targets through synthetic biology, uh, to um, help us understand viral transmission through our wonderful aerosol science research. And then I'm sure some of you were involved in that wonderful uh, volunteering effort to make literally thousands of liters of hand sanitizer in the, in the School of Chemistry, which was distributed not just across our university, but across the city. And finally, I know that so many of you volunteered in a very generous way across the city, helping citizens, helping communities, helping those who are most vulnerable to the effects of the virus. So from again, from all of us, thank you for all of those different types of, of responses and efforts. I hope you find, found your time at the University of Bristol inspiring, uh, challenging and, and rewarding in equal measure. Uh, the poet William Butler Yeats uh, said that education is not the, the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. And I hope you use your time with us, not just to acquire the knowledge and the technical skills that will serve you so well throughout your career, but a, a love of learning of research, of exploration that will enrich every facet of your life over the decades to come. Now, shortly, you're going to hear from our two guest speakers from, from Ruth and Dame Julia, and I'm sure they'll have interesting reflections and words of advice and inspiration. I'm just going to uh, make th three requests. First, uh, we're delighted that so many of your uh, family members, your friends, and your supporters who've helped you along the way are probably uh, watching over your shoulder uh, uh, looking at this event, and I certainly hope that that, that that is the case. I'm sure this was a team effort for most of you. Many of those individuals shared your dreams, but I'm sure also lived your anxieties, and they now deserve to join you in celebrating your success. So if you can physically safely do so, but, sir, but if, if not uh, virtually, please make sure to, to thank them uh, for their contributions and, the, and their help along the way. My second uh, request pertains to our university staff, real heroes during these very difficult times. Uh, as, as you know, your lecturers and professors are experts in their, in their fields research leaders and recognize as such across the world, constantly pushing back the frontiers of knowledge and also deeply committed to their teaching mission. And their efforts are, are supported by professional services staff, estate staff, technical staff, uh, cleaners, residential hall staff, many different categories of staff across the university, all focused on your success. And I'd say just a reminder that uh, this was and has been and still is a very, very difficult and challenging time for all of those individuals. We have seen an unprecedented team response to ensure that you could complete your studies. So I just urge you to send them a text message or uh, an email, or if you're slightly more traditional, even a card. Uh, they will really, really appreciate it during these extraordinary times. My final request is to stay in touch. This summer, you join well over 100,000 University of Bristol graduates across the world. 
And they, they help us in so many ways. We have ambitious plans for the university that will only be realized through the support of our alumni. We have alumni who serve as mentors, and maybe some of you have benefited from, from their advice, who help us organize work placements, internships. We, ha we have literally hundreds of alumni who come back and continue to be involved in our sports clubs, in our uh, academic societies, in our halls associations, and many who give generously to, to scholarship and, and research and other types of activity. Above all, our alumni serve as ambassadors for the university through their words, through their actions on a daily basis, through the way they conduct themselves, and of course, through the passion that they retain for their alma mater. So this summer, that baton is passed to you. And I'd, I'd really encourage you to join the Alumni Association. It's a wonderful way, not just to stay in touch with your alma mater, but to stay in touch with each other. And a reminder, you know, during these difficult times that our career service is available to you for three years after graduation. And I know it's been extraordinarily helpful for many of our new graduates. So I know I speak for our entire community when I say it has been just such a privilege for us to have been part of your journey to date. And we look forward to following your success over the years ahead. So congratulations again. Well done. Please stay in touch and I'll hand back over to the Dean. Thank you, Professor Brady. Um, we are very mindful that we cannot fully grasp what it has felt like to be finishing your studies in these circumstances. So we are really, really pleased to have one of your fellow final year students join us today. Um, and uh, she will give some reflections on behalf of you all. Your university career will have been about hard work and academic achievement, but it will also have been about the friendships and the relationships you have made along the way. So I would now like to hand over to Ruth Day. Ruth, please. Hello, class of 2020, and thank you, Professor Mark Love, for your warm introduction. It feels very strange to be addressing everyone from a bed in South London, but I think it's safe to say that this year has been anything other than ordinary. But despite all we've faced in the past year, we made it through and you should all be incredibly proud of yourselves for reaching the end of your degree. We have truly faced some unique challenges as the class of 2020. From the Fry Building catching fire three years ago, crushing the hopes and dreams of the School of Mathematics, to a global pandemic no one thought would happen in our lifetimes. We have gone through some real adversity throughout our time at university. We could not have imagined that we'd do our last university exams open book from home navigating scanning apps and Blackboard, and that we'd all get very proficient at using Zoom. But we made it through, and this just makes it all the more powerful that we are here today celebrating finishing our degrees. Finishing a degree is difficult in the most ordinary of times, so it is a real achievement that we have got here, despite all the external circumstances we have had to work through and navigate. Of course, we could not be here without the staff around us who supported us and educated us throughout our time at Bristol. Personal and senior tutors, lecturers, maths cafe supervisors, library staff, wellbeing advisors, and of course the cleaners we chatted to at 3 a.m. during late night revision sessions in the AS library, all shaped our university experience. To all of you, we say a huge thank you. Without you and all your work and guidance, we would not have got through our degrees. Together, we are the university, and it has been wonderful to be part of such a community. We have been so lucky to not only study, but also live in such a rich and diverse city over the last few years. Bristol has something for everyone, be that the quaintness of Clifton, the loud and bustling city centre, the radical roots of Easton, the rich cultural history of St Paul's, or simply a night out with friends on the Triangle. Over my time in Bristol, I especially loved spending quiet time by the harbourside, pub quizzes and pizza at the White Rabbit, getting involved in social action and campaigning, and of course having the perfunctory picnic by Clifton Suspension Bridge. We have all made very fond memories here, which we will look back on for years to come. Bristol is somewhere that I'm sure many of you will stay in or keep coming back to, as a beautiful place we have been able to call home. Of course, 
We all envisioned that we'd be celebrating together in Bristol right now, but I'm sure that day will come and I look forward to seeing you there. Now we look forward to the future, a future where all of us are going on to do amazing things. Some of us will be going on to do further study and impact the world of education and research. Some of us will be going on to full-time employment to shape our communities. And equally, some of us will be taking a well-deserved break to see the world or reconnect with old friends. We will be taking with us all the skills and experiences which we have gained over our years at university. And hopefully we will impact our new communities for the better. Everything is very uncertain right now with the fallout from COVID unclear and none of us really knowing what the world will look like in a month, let alone a year. But I'm sure that we will all go on and do great things. In such a time as this, where the most vulnerable in our society are having to shield and loneliness is at an all time high, it is so important that we come together in our communities in solidarity and compassion. I hope that many of us who are able can give back to our communities in the spirit of mutual aid, and that we can all use our unique skills talents and interests to support each other in such a time where we need each other most. Whether it's volunteering, making PPE or simply writing letters to those self-isolating in our communities, everyone's contribution is so vital. The world is ours to make and shape, especially in this era where everything is changing and our leaders are having to look at society differently. And I can't wait to see everything that we all go on to do with our Bristol degrees. They say your university years are the best of your life. Many of us here may wholeheartedly agree with this. Some of us may have had more varied times at university. But whatever your view on this, these are the years where we all grew in some way or another. Some of us have experienced moving out of home for the first time. For some of us, it's the first time we've lived in a big city. Or perhaps the first time we've been in a city without an underground, a properly working bus service. We have made friends for life, probably had a cry in a library at some point and have practiced resilience as the world and academic life threw one thing after another at us. We have all battled through lockdown, social distancing and online teaching, things which cohorts before us never would have thought that university students would ever have to face. We should all be incredibly proud of everything we have achieved. And I hope that you will look back on these days with fondness and pride. Thank you very much for letting me speak to you today and best of luck with everything you go on to do in the future. We are the people who can go forward from here, take all the skills we've gained from endless problem sheets, homeworks and labs, and we can really pay our part in building the post-COVID world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruth. You really deserve a big round of applause. And um, I'm sorry you, you can't hear, hear the applause that I'm sure uh, is across the world right now. Your time at the University of Bristol has been a rich and varied one. The staff that have taught you, the professional services staff that have supported you and the wider city will have all shaped part of your experiences with us. There are many more people that are in this event today that would like to wish you well. So I would like uh, now to introduce a short film. Very strange time. You've done incredibly well to get through. But for all of you, it's a year of celebration. The year when your hard work, your commitment, your dedication to your studies comes to fruition. We know that 2020 has been an extraordinary year for everyone. But take a look at this year as being an opportunity to connect back with the people who've made your time at Bristol special and the city which made all that come together. What I loved most about my course was every day was not the same and the challenges made me a stronger person. I found it incredibly invigorating listening to other students' projects, what they were really excited about. Studying in Bristol with many people from different parts of the world. And meet with my friends. Even after the lockdown, I still maintain in contact with them online. The diverse experiences in Bristol is my most valuable part of my last year. Getting involved in practical stuff, and also getting used to the technology that I have now used before. Being at Bristol, I've been given the confidence to grab the opportunities that have been presented with me. Learning how to be independent and live alone in a different country. My favourite memory of being in Bristol this year has been being involved in the Students' Union. I think that students' voice is really important. 
There's a lot to be said for Bristol and I know that throughout your course you have experienced the city in all its greatness. My favourite places in Bristol would be the Royal Fort Gardens in the University, Clifton Village and St Nicholas Market. Clifton Suspension Bridge, Harbour Side Lead Docks, Castle Park, College Green, Cathedral, you name it and you have it. Loads of independent cinemas and shops and I love the music scene. The nightlife, it is amazing here. That's one of the most important things I'm going to miss. Bristol is the twin city of my hometown, Guangzhou, and I'm a crazy fan of Sean the Ship the Animation. Bristol Harbour side, where I'm standing right now. I love being near to the water. Going to the park, going to the pub, or studying together. Will's Memorial. First time I went into the Will's Memorial building, I felt like if I was in a Harry Potter movie. My favourite place in Bristol and in the university would be Student Union Living Room. I do love the Queen's Building as well. It's pretty cliche for an engineer, but I love the Queen's Building. The creative spirit, like you can see the graffiti here, and also the community spirit, that everyone is here together to support each other. Everything is beautiful about this city, and I'm going to miss the city as well as the university. We've had a pretty bizarre end to our degrees, so I think if we can support ourselves through this, then we're going to have friends for life. Class of 2020, you have finished your degree in a global pandemic. That's amazing. Despite no one really knowing what's next in the world, know that you've grown as people, even if it doesn't feel that way just yet, and face challenges that you've overcome to be where you are today. You will have worked hard to get your degree, so very well done. Be proud of what you have achieved. There's also a truth that it's in the middle of huge challenge that we really find out who we are. We know that students have really stepped up in volunteers and, and helped the city to cope and that's been incredibly welcome. Congratulations class of 2020. And good luck for the future. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Well done guys. Congratulations all the students of 2020 and hopefully we'll see you again in the future. Thank you very much guys, I appreciate all the love, alright, and I'll see you again soon. There's a little blowtorch for you. <laughs> Congratulations class of 2020, we did it. So thank you for choosing Bristol and really, really well done and good luck for the future. You'll know from your time at Bristol how special this city is. And I speak as someone who graduated, moved away and came back. Why? Well, a little part of Bristol stays with you and we'd be delighted to see you back in the city at some future point. Keep us in your hearts, keep us in your minds. Be an ambassador for us on the global stage. On behalf of everyone at the university, I wish you all the very best for the future and look forward to welcoming you back to Bristol when we can for our traditional graduation ceremonies. So congratulations again and well done. Hey, I'm James Blunt. A huge congratulations. You have just finished the best years of your life and it's all downhill from here. Wonderful. It is now time for us to hear from a very special speaker, Dame Julia Slingo. Dame Julia Slingo served as chief scientist of the UK Met Office from 2009 to 2016. At the Met Office, she led a team of more than 500 scientists working on a broad portfolio of research that underpins weather forecasting, climate predictions, and climate change projections. Through her career, she has worked at the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts, the US National Center for Atmospheric Research and Reading University. Amongst other honors, Dame Julia was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 2015 and foreign member of the US National Academy of Engineering in 2016. Dame Julia has brought innovative approaches to understanding and modeling weather 
and climate. She has developed and used complex weather and climate models to deliver new insights into how the atmosphere and climate system works, as well as significant advances in predictive skill and uh, uh, climate services. Her special interests are tropical weather and climate variability. Since her retirement, she has taken on a number of advisory roles, including special advisor on science to the Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization and is a member of the new NERC Council under UKRI. She holds an honorary professorship at the Cabot Institute of the University of Bristol, where she chairs the advisory board, and at the University of Exeter, where she is a lead author of the third UK climate change risk assessment. I would now like to invite Dame Julia to address our science students. Good morning, everybody. And it is a, a really great privilege to speak to you all today on this extraordinary occasion where we gather together remotely to celebrate the completion of your studies. My heartiest congratulations to you all and my wishes that you will be able to graduate in style before too long. It's now approaching 50 years since I graduated from Bristol with a physics degree. After three wonderful years at this great university and vibrant city. I remember with great fondness cycling across the Downs from Baydock Hall, going to lectures at the Wills Building and spending as much time as possible singing in various choirs. Happy days indeed, as I'm sure yours have been too. So what's next for you all? Well, when I graduated, I knew that I wanted to continue in physics, but in something where I could see physics in action. Looking out of my bedroom window, I had pondered why clouds have so many different forms, why the winds generally blow from the west. Not immediately obvious if you think about it. So I applied to the Met Office then, as now, the preeminent organisation for atmospheric and climate research. I joined a group that was writing the first computer codes to simulate the global climate, using a computer with barely the power of your mobile phone. I specialised in calculating the short wave, i.e. the solar and long wave, the infrared radiative fluxes, and how they interact with the atmosphere, clouds and the Earth's surface. Essentially, I was working out the greenhouse effect. At that time, we imposed the carbon dioxide concentration in the model at 320 parts per million by volume. Today, that number is close to 420, a rise of around one third in just 45 years. In 1978, I wrote a paper on the effects of doubling carbon dioxide and how much the feedbacks from clouds and water vapour might amplify the warming. It was published in a book on carbon dioxide, climate and society. But little did I realise that by the end of my career, climate change would be the defining challenge for the coming decades. Two children later, I joined Reading University and spent over 15 years researching the weather and climate of the tropics. It was immensely satisfying to discover new things about the Indian monsoon, about El Nino and about the climate of Africa. And then in 2008, out of the blue, I was invited to be the next Met Office chief scientist. This was definitely not in the game plan. But after thinking long and hard, I decided that I might make a difference, so I accepted. It was a steep learning curve. I was in charge of over 500 scientists, working on everything from how to forecast local weather a few hours ahead to global climate change over the next century. Essentially, I had to become a polymath. Climate change means knowing about how the Earth system works, from the deep oceans to the great ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica, from the carbon and nitrogen cycles in the terrestrial biosphere to the chemistry of the atmosphere. And then there are the social, economic and political dimensions. 
being Met Office Chief Scientist was a wonderful job and a great privilege to do. But it was often an uncomfortable place to be. As Thomas Jefferson, the third American president, wrote a long time ago, nature intended me for the tranquil pursuits of science by rendering them my supreme delight. But the enormities of the times in which I have lived have forced me to commit myself on the boisterous ocean of political passions. Well, my role put me in the firing line of the climate change sceptics. They did not like me, but it taught me several important things. First, always stay true to what science tells you and make sure you understand it because then you're on really solid ground. Second, be honest about the uncertainties what we know and what we don't know, even if it's uncomfortable. Third, be objective and respectful in your dealings with others, not stooping to personal remarks, as so often in my case, the climate skeptics did. And fourth, to be humble and not believe that science has all the answers. So why do I say that? Well, Today, throughout this pandemic, scientific advice has been the basis of the government's decisions. SAGE, the Science Advisory Group in Emergencies, has, has in my view done an amazing job in gathering the best possible scientific evidence under enormous pressure. I too served on SAGE during the Iceland volcanic ash emergency, so I have a small inkling of what it is like. But now, just as then, the government it has to weigh up not just what SAGE advises, but what the social and economic consequences might be. It's a balancing act, and one that doesn't always sit comfortably with scientists. Today, science is at the heart of all our futures, not just for the human race, but indeed for all life on Earth. Never before have we so desperately needed young people with your skills. As I have found in my career, a training in science provides you with an analytical mind, with the ability for structured thinking, and the capacity to turn your hand to a wide range of problems. These are the qualities we need to tackle the truly interdisciplinary challenges that society faces, whether it's from climate change, the damage that we cause to our natural environment, or global pandemics. <clears throat> Let's be very clear, we have a real fight on our hands and not much time to find solutions. This may all sound rather depressing, but I want to leave you with this message of hope from a friend of mine and a fellow scientist. His name was Piers Sellers, a British born climate scientist whom I worked with in my early career. But Piers was destined to do greater things and became a NASA astronaut. He flew on three space shuttle missions and brought new perspectives to the challenge of climate change. In early 2016, Piers learned that he had terminal cancer. On receiving that devastating news, he wrote an inspiring piece in the New York Times on climate change. And I want to read part of it to you today. New technologies have a way of bettering our lives in ways we cannot anticipate. And I think we've kind of seen that in this pandemic. There is no convincing demonstrated reason to believe that our evolving future will be worse than our present, assuming careful management of the challenges and risks. History is replete with examples of us humans getting out of tight spots. The winners tended to be realistic, pragmatic and flexible. The losers were often in denial of the threat. As an astronaut, I spacewalked 220 miles above the Earth. Floating alongside the International Space Station, I watched hurricanes cartwheel across the oceans. Gigantic nighttime thunderstorms flash and flare for hundreds of miles along the equator and the Amazon snake its way to the sea through a brilliant green carpet of forest. From this God's eye view, I saw how fragile and infinitely precious the earth is. I'm hopeful for its future. Unlike peers, 
I am hopeful too. You will have your part to play in bettering our lives. And I wish you all the very best as you start that journey. Um, so congratulations to you all, class of 2020, and my very best wishes uh, for a successful career in, in the future, whatever you choose to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dame Julia, for your fascinating um, address. Thank you. Um, I'm aware that there were a few technical glitches um, with uh, the um, Zoom transmission. Um, if you have experienced those, um, just to reiterate, everything is recorded um, and you will be able to access um, Dame Julia's speech and, and the other um, uh, items from today uh, later on. Um, what I'd like to do now is to invite questions from you. Um, you have the uh, question and answer button on the, on uh, um, below uh, on your screen. So please submit them in writing, and I'll put them to Dame Julia. We have a we have a few minutes for that. Um, let me have a look. I have one question here from Sweeta Suresh um, to Dame Julia. What is your fondest memory of university? Oh gosh, that's a tricky one because I like so many of, of the things I did. I think in my final year, I was lucky enough to share a flat with five other girls on the top floor of two houses in Victoria Square. And if you know Victoria Square, you'll know that, that was quite now quite a salubrious place to live. Um, but then we were fortunate enough to have this huge flat on the top floor and we had some fantastic times being that close to the student union and that close to Clifton. And um, the other thing I remember is that we used to cook together all the time um, and we used to eat an awful lot of cabbage because I guess cabbage was cheap, but it's amazing what you can do with cabbage. So I had a very happy time, particularly in my third year, and that's a very fond memory. Great, thank you. Um, uh, another a really interesting question that's come in. Uh, in a world of fake news, how can we ensure people's trust in science and academic expertise is maintained? Now, this is a really difficult one. And um, I think actually the pandemic has done a lot of good things for us because actually the scientists have been out there in the forefront. And when I was chief scientist, I, I did try as much as possible to get into the media and so forth, quite deliberately, because I thought that if I don't give, as I said, you know, the, the fundamental truths about the science of climate change, then of course you're allowing those who have put out opinions to win. And I think that you know, we have, um, despite the criticism of the scientists, Hindsight is always easy to be critical. Um, we have seen that science advice given by the scientists and brought it together. And with all the caveats of uncertainty, we have seen that in the pandemic and people have trusted it. So I hope we can continue to do that. But it's all about, at the end of the day, it's all about communication. Great, thank you. Um, Abdullah Kwaja has submitted a question. Thank you for that. What's the second biggest challenge facing humanity? I guess we have to answer what is the, the, the first biggest, unless that's obvious to everyone. But what is the second biggest? Well, I said that I, I, I think climate change is the, the greatest challenge, and I still think that's the case. It may not seem so today while we're in a global pandemic, but we'll fix that in a couple of years with a vaccine. But climate change, we're in for the long haul. And actually what we do today really matters for 50 years time. And um, we have some really big societal, economic, political transformations to make. So I think climate change is the biggest. And actually sort of, and very related to that, but often talked about very separately is the, the risk to what we call biodiversity and ecosystem services. So along with climate change, we are also um, damaging the natural environment 
very, very significantly. And that's largely because is it, that there are too many of us on the planet, quite frankly, and we have to learn to live in a way that um, takes nature into account. That is what we call a good deal for nature when we think about the, the uh, uh, things that we need to do in the future. And we'll have to do that, otherwise we won't have enough water to drink and we won't have enough food to eat. Um, and we will lose the wonderful richness of uh, life on earth that is so precious and that we have a duty to steward and I talk often about earth stewardship um, we have a duty to steward all life on on earth and pass it on to the next generations in all its glory if we possibly can so for me climate change and I guess the second one is how do we steward the earth in a way that uh, retains all the things that we all the beauty and diversity that we enjoy today. Thank you very much. And I just wanted to endorse this. And it is the reason why uh, environmental research is one of our top priorities in, in, in this faculty. And we, we put more and more resources into it. We hire the best scientists in the world to work on this. And we work in partnership with many, many other research centers across, across the world. Um, uh, I think we have time for maybe uh, 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 one or two more questions. Um, Emma Carey Prieto asks, what was your favorite thing about studying physics at Bristol? Ah, well, lots of things. I, I'll be honest, I didn't actually quite really like statistical mechanics and, and, and some of the and particle physics, but I loved all the things that were sort of more hands-on that you could play with. And um, I can still remember in uh, one of my years where we had to do a little research project, project uh, working out what were the properties of this material called silly putty. Do you remember that? Do we still have it? Whereas it's a, a, a compound that, you know, if you hit it hard, it's like a rock. And if you treat it gently, it flows like a liquid and so it was all about understanding the um, engineering properties I suppose of this material it was thought of at one time that you might use it in, in seat belts for example um, um, but we had a we had a lot of fun creating lots and lots of experiments to work out uh, how this this material worked in a in a mechanical sort of way um, and so I always liked liked very much the more pra the classical physics that we did and the thermodynamics and so forth. I would say that that was the stuff I enjoyed most of all. Um, and I was always very glad that we did have open note exams even in those days. But we did have a most wonderful general paper at the end of it, which was not open note, but it had all sorts of random questions to do with things like. Um, rolling a 50p coin down a slope and you know knowing things about the um, geometry of a 50 piece coin which was new currency in those days um, so I thought that was very enlightened of Bristol to have these open note exams you didn't have to learn loads and loads of equations but you did actually have to use your brain to work out some rather interesting problems thank you very much um I think we are running um, uh, out of time for the questions. Thank you all uh, for submitting questions. Um, I'm really sorry we couldn't answer all of them. Um, but thank you, Dame Julia, for being here with thank us you. today, for your really warm words and for answering all, all the questions so patiently. So thank you very much. Um, we are now coming towards the end of this celebration event and it is time for some student performances. So first up are the Bristol University Singers. Hello, Bristol Class of 2020. My name is Eleanor Cooper and I am Musical Director of Bristol University Singers, the university's top auditioned choral ensemble. I'm very proud to present a performance recorded by Bristol University Singers during lockdown. We're saying goodbye to a large number of final year students from across all faculties this year and wish them and all of you the very best. Here is Underneath the Stars by Kate Rusby, arranged here by Jim Clements.
Well, this was amazing, wonderful. Now, we will shortly finish the uh, event with one final performance from our Symphonia Society, and then your messages will be displayed and the chat will remain open until 11.15 a.m. when the event will close. After the performance, there will also be a short poll for you to complete along with some important links in respect to the careers service and alumni association um, and as the vice chancellor said please make use of these services they are for you and for you to use it just remains for me to say thank you for joining us today we sincerely hope it will not be long until we can welcome you back in person to the university for your graduation ceremonies Thank you to all of our guest speakers. On behalf of everyone at the university, including all faculty staff, it has been such a pleasure to have been on this journey with you. Thank you all. My name is Enio Para. I'm a final year law student at the University of Bristol, and I also conduct the Bristol University Symphonia Symphony Orchestra. Symphonia is the university's orchestral society consisting of two orchestras, our audition symphony orchestra and our unaudition philharmonic orchestra. What you're about to hear is a socially distanced virtual performance put together by our members during the lockdown 
a handful of which are final year students. So we hope you enjoy. See you soon. Honestly, Annie, that rip is annoying.